411 separation. After the order crisis was resolved this time, all the office employees were divided into two batches and returned to the factory for anti-fraud training. The goal of the training was to prevent and see through the various traps set by others. After all, Yu Bing had so much anti-fraud knowledge in her mind. It would be a waste not to use them as examples. Yu Bing was delayed by something and got off work half an hour late. When she passed by the accounting room, she heard voices inside. Mom, is it because of Grandma that we're not going home at noon? Are we not going back to Dad and Grandma's house in the future? A childish voice came from the door. In the finance room, son Huey's small body was covered by Wen Chin's thin jacket as he lay on the one meter long desk. Because of malnutrition, he looked like he was four years old at six years old. Wen Chin looked at her son's clear and bright eyes, which revealed the innocence unique to children. She originally wanted to resolve things peacefully with the son family behind his back, but seeing Madam Sun's actions, she knew that she was too naive. Sooner or later, the child would have to know. Wasn't Madam Sun so fearless because Madam Sun knew she didn't want the child to be affected? However, if this continued, the child would probably be affected even more. After making up her mind, when Chin asked, I'm going to leave your dad. Are you willing to live with me? Sun we didn't answer immediately. He lowered his eyes and thought for a moment. When Chin's heart was in her throat as she stared at the expression on her son's face. Sun we didn't remain silent for long. After he looked up at Wen Chin, he replied seriously, Mom, if we have to be separated, I'll be with you. The child in your stomach will be born soon, so I want to protect you guys. Grandma has my father, and you have me. After Sun we finished speaking, he patted his chest with his small hand, as if he wanted to use this action to increase the credibility of his words. Wen Chin's eyes instantly filled with tears as she held her son's small hand and kissed it. With her son's assurance, she was much more confident. When Yu Bing heard the mother and son's conversation, she couldn't help but think of the rumors she had heard when she returned to the village two days ago. Hence, she raised her hand and knocked on the door of the accounting room. Wen Chin, I'm Yu Bing. When Wen Chin heard Yu Bing's voice, she hurriedly stood up and opened the door. Yu Bing, you're not off work yet? Yu Bing replied in embarrassment, I just locked the door and was about to go home. When I passed by just now, I overheard your conversation. Then, you being asked with concern, I heard that Madam Sun has started to stay at your house overnight. Wen Qing nodded helplessly. I plan to talk to her after work today. You being patted Wen Qing's shoulder. Let me know if you need help. Wen Qing pursed her lips and smiled as she said, Okay. You being and Wen Qing chatted for a while before leaving. At four in the afternoon, Madam Sun appeared in E Mountain Village as usual. You're quite punctual. You appear at this time every day. Madam Ning, one of Madam Sun's friends, took the initiative to greet her. Madam Sun replied with a smile, I just wanted to chat with you guys for a while. Why didn't Bai Tao come today? Madam Ning said mysteriously, Bai Tao's family caused a huge commotion this morning. Her second daughter-in-law wants to leave. She's very angry and is probably lying at home. Madam Sun immediately leaned forward and asked curiously, isn't her youngest son still unmarried? Why does the family want to leave under such circumstances? Rural families usually split up after their children became adults and got married. If all the sons in the family wanted to split up, their parents would mostly agree. They would most likely live with their eldest son after they split up. When Madam Ning saw that Madam Sun was interested in her news, she said, she has three sons and two daughters, but she dotes on the youngest son the most. Her second daughter-in-law works in our village's food factory. Bai Tao was envious and wanted to get her youngest son a spot in our village's food factory as well. However, Yu Bing is very strict. Moreover, the recruitment process for the food factory is very rigorous. It's impossible to bribe her. Therefore, her youngest son failed a few times. Bai Tao didn't give up and got someone to find a part-time worker job in the town's factory. This will cost a lot of money, so her second daughter-in-law objected. She thinks that after she submits her monthly salary, Bai Tao will use it to subsidize her youngest son. In a few months, she will have to pay the betrothal gift. This morning, she forced Bai Tao to choose between her youngest son's job and marriage. If she wants to choose both, she has to split up the family first. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. For 12 don't want money. Madam Ning told Madam Sun a bunch of things about Bai Tao's family, but Madam Sun only heard, Yu Bing doesn't accept bribes. Seeing that Madam Ning was talking excitedly, Madam Sun could only suppress her curiosity and listen attentively. In fact, Madam Sun's thoughts had already unfolded with that sentence. She felt that her idea was good, but she had yet to plan how to implement it. She had to hurry. When Madam Ning finally finished speaking, Madam Sun hurriedly asked, How much? 
Madam Ning was stunned and asked in confusion, how much? Madam Sun repeated impatiently, when Bai Tao wanted to send her son to work in the food factory, how much was she planning to spend? When Madam Ning heard this, she thought that Madam Sun also wanted to spend money to send her son to the factory, so she didn't think too much about it. 100 Yuan At this moment, Madam Sun felt that Yu Bing was like a cash cow. After Madam Ning thought for a moment, she said in a gloating tone, Your son can forget about it. Isn't your daughter-in-law in the midst of a divorce? Yu Bing is quite protective. Moreover, you even brought people to cause trouble for her last time. No matter how much money you give her now, she won't let your son in. The old people in the village didn't go to the fields. After all, the chores at home was relatively easy. Only very diligent and healthy old people would insist on working in the fields to earn work points. Madam Sun glanced at Madam Ning silently, but she felt disdain for her. No wonder she had to wash clothes, cook, and take care of children for the younger generation in the family. Unlike her, who only had to take care of her grandson occasionally and teach her daughter-in-law a few lessons every day. Of course, she left all the chores to her daughter-in-law. Previously, when Qing was obedient. Later on, before the divorce, she gave half of her salary every month. But now, she no longer cared about that money. After all, as long as she helped her son deal with Yu Bing, she would be able to enjoy life. When Madam Sun thought of how Yu Bing had rejected Bai Tao and missed out on the 100 yuan benefit fee, her heart ached. When her son married Yu Bing, she would definitely teach her a lesson. She was a fool if she didn't accept free money. The two of them were alike. Although they both felt that the other party was inferior to them, when they gossiped about other people's matters, the two of them would have the same opinion. They chatted excitedly until past five o'clock before Madame Ning got up and went home to cook. Madame Sun waited for Wen Qin to appear. Then, she stood up, patted the dust off her butt, and followed Wen Qin into the house. Madame Sun went straight to the living room as usual and waited for dinner to start. However, she realized that Wen Qin was following her instead of going to the kitchen. The smile on Madame Sun's face gradually disappeared as she said gloomily, Why aren't you cooking? Are you trying to starve me to death? Wen Qin pushed Xiao Hui gently. Xiao Hui, go into your room. I have something to say to your grandma. After Xiao Hui looked at the two of them, he obediently entered the room and closed the door. Wen Qin turned around and looked at Madame Sun as she said with an impassive expression, It's useless for you to waste time with me. I've already filed for divorce more than a month ago. The verdict will come soon. You can delay it for another month at most. If you dare to appear at my house again, I can sue you for trespassing. Madam Sun was an illiterate person who only knew how to write her name. She didn't know if Wen Qin was telling the truth, but she felt that as long as she had Xiao Hui, everything could be considered family matters. As long as it wasn't a matter of life and death, even officials couldn't interfere. Are you trying to scare me? As a grandmother, I can't even visit my grandson. Which country has such an unreasonable law? Do you think you can fool me just because I don't know the law? I'm much older than you. As Madam Sun spoke, she took out her tobacco pipe to poke Wen Qin like before. After Wen Qin snatched Madam Sun's tobacco pipe and threw it to the ground, the brass pipe and the dark red hollow golden sandalwood connecting the pipe mouth were broken, and the cigarette mouth was also broken in half. Madam Sun was stunned. To Madam Sun, this cigarette but proved that she had once been a master and that there had been people who had been ordered around by her. It was also a symbol of her former status. It was a witness to the glorious life she had led after giving birth to a son from Mr. Sun. However, all of this disappeared with the broken pipe. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. 413 Cigarette Poll Madam Sun was furious. You be asterisk TCH. I'll beat you to death. She raised her hand to hit Wen Qin. Madam Sun even had delusions that Wen Qin would stand there and let her beat and scold her like before. Wen Qin raised her hand and grabbed Madam Sun's thin arm so tightly that Madam Sun couldn't break free. I went to the hospital to do an injury report and have already submitted it to the court. This is enough to prove that you and your son have been using domestic violence on me for a long time. Also, there's the record of so many years of work. Speaking of which, I really have to thank you. Ever since I arrived at your house, you stopped working and even taught your son to slack off. The work points of the two of you are not as much as mine alone. Not to mention, other than work points, I also have a salary now, so I'm definitely taking custody of Xiao Hui. If you want to visit your grandson, do so at the door. After all, I'm not at ease with people who have violent tendencies and have been detained before. Wen Qin knew that her son would hear everything she said, but she still chose to respond to Madam Sun rudely. If she continued to compromise like this, she would only be in a slightly better situation than before. 
when Chin didn't want her son to interact with the Sun family at all. People's values were formed when they were children, so when Chin felt that she should cut ties quickly. Madam Sun was shocked, but she still put on a fierce look as she tried to break free from Chin's hand. Then, she gritted her teeth and said, I won't let you off easy. Just you wait. From Chin's determined gaze and tone, Madam Sun knew that Chin was beyond her control now. Since they were not divorced yet, she was still her mother-in-law. Even if she suffered today, she couldn't let Chin off easy. Hence, she shouted at the door, Help! My daughter-in-law is going to beat me to death. Madam Sun's sharp voice spread. At this time, everyone had just returned home from work. When they heard this shout, many people left the living room and walked to the courtyard to find out which family the voice came from. Seeing this, Chin didn't stand on ceremony anymore. She grabbed Madam Sun's arm and dragged her out of the door. Madam Sun refused to leave and let out a miserable scream. Ah! Someone's going to die! Help! When Chin finally dragged Madam Sun to the door and opened it, she saw that there was already a crowd outside. At this moment, Madam Sun stopped struggling and let Chin pull her. She forced out two drops of tears as she said, Villagers, please help me. I want to see my grandson. What right does Chin have to refuse? She scared me to death. I thought someone died. Didn't you see what Madam Sun was like last time? She likes to exaggerate things. If the old woman wants to see her grandson, Chin is being too unreasonable if she refuses. Madam Ning was originally cooking at home. When she heard from the passersby that something had happened to Chin's family, she hurriedly ran over to watch the commotion. When she heard this, she defended her friend. That's right. At this age, other than her grandson, she doesn't have any other concerns. As her daughter-in-law, it's fine if she's not filial, but she doesn't even let her grandson see her. She's too vicious. Everyone was discussing at the door, but when Chin didn't intend to explain too much. I've already filed for divorce with the court and the verdict will be out soon, so I'm no longer the daughter-in-law of the Sun family. As for visiting the child, the verdict will decide it. Everything will be done according to the law. Madam Sun thought quickly. Then before the court gives the verdict, you'll still be my daughter-in-law. Whether I want to see my grandson or not is none of your business. Madam Ning wanted to blow things up, so when she heard Madam Sun's retort, she immediately added, That's right. Wen Qing, why are you so immoral? How can you bully an old woman who loves her grandson so dearly? Madam Ning, you have to help the right people. The immoral one is Madam Sun instead of Wen Qing, a villager mocked. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. 414 Manipulation that's right. Your memory isn't good, but we have good memories. The scar on Chin's arm that day scared me. Madam Sun and her son don't even treat people as humans, so I wonder who's the immoral one. Children are unfilial when parents are unfilial. There's a reason for all of this. Madam Sun, we've all seen what kind of person you were last time, but you still haven't given up and still came to our place to cause trouble. Most people were still on Chin's side, so Madam Ning naturally wouldn't continue standing up for her. Madam Sun didn't expect so many people to help Wen Qing. Seeing this, Wen Qing became even more confident. Xiao Hui's grandma, don't come to my house in the future. Even if the verdict hasn't been handed down, I'm not related to you by blood and I rented this house. If you barge in without my permission, it can be considered trespassing. If I call the police, you'll definitely be detained again. When Wen Qing mentioned detention, everyone recalled that Madam Sun had been arrested by the police and looked at Madam Sun with disgust. Let's go, Sun. This is someone who's been in prison. She's a bad person. Let's not get too close. I didn't see it that day. So she was the one who was arrested. I happened to be there that day and witnessed the entire process. This old woman is so hateful. After slandering the accountant, she slandered Miss Yu. To put it bluntly, she wants to force Miss Yu to fire the accountant. The accountant can only go home after losing her job. What would be waiting for her next is to return to the Sun family and continue doing hard labor. There were some smart people who could tell at a glance what Madam Sun was planning. However, Madam Sun wasn't afraid of the detention center at all. In any case, it was just a matter of going in for a few days. Food and accommodation were provided, and she didn't have to work. However, looking at the people pointing at her outside, she knew that she wouldn't be able to gain anything today, so she stared at Chin as she said fiercely, I want to take away my pipe. With that, she turned around and entered the living room. After she picked up her broken cigarette butt, she walked past Wen Chin. When she turned around, she looked at Wen Chin venomously. Then, she snorted and walked out of Wen Chin's house. Seeing that there was nothing much to see, everyone dispersed. 
Madam Sun cursed all the way back to the village. Unexpectedly, she discovered Yu Bing, who had returned home alone. She walked forward with a smile and greeted, Yu Bing, are you off work? Yu Bing felt a chill run down her spine when she saw Madam Sun's wrinkled smile. She sized her up suspiciously but didn't speak. Madam Sun continued, I heard that you live at the back of the village. I've been wandering around recently and realized that there aren't many families there, so it's not safe. Although you live with another female intellectual, you two are still girls. Then, she said earnestly, a girl should get married as soon as possible. With a man at home, she will have a pillar of support. Yu Bing replied with a fake smile, Wen Qin is the pillar of your family, right? Madam Sun's expression froze for a moment as she cursed Yu Bing inwardly. However, when she thought of how she had once tortured Wen Qin and imagined the scene of her torturing Yu Bing, her anger dissipated. She put on a magnanimous expression as she said, Children don't understand the concept of family. No matter how capable a woman is, she has to get married. When Yu Bing heard this, she turned around and left. She couldn't even be bothered to say another word to Madam Sunday. It was a waste of time to hear such brainwashing words. When Madam Sun saw Yu Bing turn around, her anger that had finally subsided rose again. She cursed softly, little bitch, let's see if you still dare to be so arrogant after Sun Gua screws you. This time, we learned a lesson from that B asterisk TCH Wen Chain. We have to think of a way to control Yu Bing. You still dare to come to our place? Yu Yin wrapped her fingers around the braid on her chest and stood beside Madam Sunday. As she stared at Yu Bing's departing back, she teased Madam Sun in amusement. The sudden voice startled Madam Sun and she took a few steps back. Ah! Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. 415 Encouraging Education Yu Yin looked at Madam Sun with interest as she asked with a smile, Madam Sun, why are you so scared? When Madam Sun saw that it was Yu Yin, she rolled her eyes at her. You have the nerve to stay here? Why wouldn't I dare to come? You make it sound like you're not the one who entered the police station with me. You, Yu Yin pointed at Madam Sun, but couldn't refute her. She quickly looked around and heaved a sigh of relief when she realized that there was no one around. Madam Sun looked at Yu Yin in disdain. What do you mean? You want to cause trouble, but you're so timid. No wonder you can't compare to Yu Bing. You guys are both surnamed Yu, but why are you so much worse? Madam Sun had always felt that Yu Yin was the one who caused her to go to jail, so she felt like they were enemies. Even Yu Bing was ranked lower in terms of enemy status. Moreover, it was obvious that Yu Yin couldn't stand Yu Bing, so Madam Sun knew that Yu Bing was Yu Yan's sore spot. As expected, Yu Yin was furious. Yu Yin couldn't stand people praising Yu Bing in front of her. Just as she was about to say something, she recalled what she had heard Madam Sun mutter when she approached just now. Although Madam Sun's voice was soft, Yu Yin still heard it. After she thought about it for a moment, she decided to add fuel to the fire. Yu Yin pretended to be angry and said, What's the use of thinking highly of her? Yu Bing's monthly salary is dozens of yuan, but will it go to your pocket just because you put in a few good words for her? Dozens of yuan? Madam Sun's eyes lit up. Yu Yin was very satisfied when she saw Madam Sun's greedy expression and she continued to add fuel to the fire, you're so funny. She caused us to get sent to jail while she fooled around with a man. Why are you helping her? Last time, Madam Sun was misled by Yu Yan's words. This time, when she heard Yu Yan's ambiguous words again, she was a little suspicious and looked at Yu Yan with a gaze that said, Don't treat me like a fool. Yu Yan felt exasperated. Yu Yan originally wanted Madam Sun to know that Yu Bing had a crush, so Madam Sun should make a move quickly. She didn't expect Madam Sun to become so cautious after being tricked once. Yu Yan could only say, If you don't believe me, you can ask around. It's that man who looked for the police last time. If he wasn't interested in Yu Bing, would he have run around for her? When he went, the two of them were sitting together intimately. You saw it too. I'm not lying. Madam Sun quickly recalled Xiao Sheng's appearance. She had to admit that Xiao Sheng's appearance was indeed handsome. Her son was nowhere as handsome. At the thought of this, she felt a little uneasy. When Yu Yin saw Madam Sun frown slightly, she knew that Madam Sun was convinced. The corners of her mouth curled up into a smug smile and she regained her good mood. Yu Bing had no idea they were scheming against her at this moment. She went to the commune in the afternoon and bought some pork and pork bones in town. After Yu Bing entered Wenqin's courtyard, she saw Sun Hui squatting in the small courtyard while practicing calligraphy with a tree branch. As she approached, she encouraged with a smile, Xiao Hui is so diligent. Yu Bing didn't have any children in her previous life, but she knew that encouragement was very important for children like Xiao Hui, who were not outgoing enough. She had to praise them more and slowly nurture their confidence. 
When Sun Hui looked up and saw Yu Bing, he smiled and stood up to greet her politely. Sister Yu Bing. Yu Bing patted Sun Hui's head. After having class during this period of time, do you think it's difficult? Sun Hui immediately shook his head and shared his learning experience. It's not difficult at all. My mom has taught me some words in the past, and I often teach students who haven't learned those words yet after class. As Yu Bing looked at the bright expression on Sun Hui's face when he mentioned studying, she praised, Xiao Hui, you're awesome. Do you have any books you want to read? Next time, when I help the village's library buy books, I'll pick something you like to read. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. 416 Extracurricular Studies Extracurricular books were always more attractive to students than boring textbooks. Xiao We couldn't help but feel excited when he heard this. I want to read The Little Prince. Mom told me about this book. Xiao Hui, how can you ask other people for books? Wen Qin heard their conversation when she walked out of the kitchen. When Xiao Hui heard the reproach in his mother's tone, he realized that he had done something wrong. He lowered his head and apologized to Yu Bing. Yu Bing hurriedly eased things over by joking, I took the initiative to ask. If you want to blame someone, you might as well blame me. The library is meant for everyone. Xiao Hui is my little consultant for purchasing books. I'm learning what types of books children like at this stage from him. Seeing that Yu Bing didn't seem perfunctory, when Qin said to Sun Hui gently, thank her. When Sun Hui heard that he had a chance to read the book he wanted to read, he looked at Yu Bing with sparkling eyes and said loudly, thank you, Sister Yu Bing. Yu Bing raised her eyebrows. I have to thank you for your suggestion. When Sun Hui heard this, he immediately replied, Sister Yu Bing, if you need any help next time, look for me. When Yu Bing saw Sun Hui's anxious expression, she smiled and said, no problem. When Wen Qin saw her son's enthusiastic expression, she smiled and said, hurry up and practice your calligraphy. The two of us will talk for a while. Sun Hui walked to the other side and continued to use the tree branch to review the knowledge he had learned today. Yu Bing smiled and said, I feel that after you moved out with Xiao Hui, he became much livelier. Wen Qin nodded in agreement. Indeed. When we were in the Sun family's home, although they didn't mistreat Xiao Hui, they didn't treat him very well either. They have always been selfish and have always put themselves first. That family doesn't have any kindness at all. They're a dysfunctional family. Wen Qin's tone was filled with disgust. Madam Sun wants to control everyone in the family. Sun Gua is like a pawn. He gets what he wants by listening to Madam Sunday. When Yu Bing heard this, she whispered to Wen Qin, I just came back from town and saw your mother-in-law leaving the village. How was your discussion? Wen Qin said helplessly, it's still the same, but I won't indulge her this time. The verdict will be out in more than a month and I've already applied for visitation rights once per month on the grounds that the Sun family is prone to domestic violence. The location can only be near my address. When Yu Bing heard that Wen Qin already had an idea, she didn't say anything else. She took out a piece of pork bone wrapped in newspaper from her bag and handed it to Wen Qin. Wen Qin, I bought two pork bones. I'll give you one to make soup for Xiao Hui tonight. Wen Qin hurriedly pushed it back. I can't take it. Take it back. Yu Bing frowned and stuffed it into Wen Qin's hand. If I hadn't bumped into your mother-in-law just now and knew that she wasn't eating at your house tonight, I wouldn't have brought it. I don't care if you eat it or not, but Xiao Hui has to eat it. Look at how thin the child is. When he was lying down to take a nap at noon, I saw that he's not even as tall as the table. If you don't nourish him, you'll regret it. When Wen Qin heard this, she didn't refuse anymore and she looked moved as she said, Thank you. I'll buy some and return it to you during my break. During the time that Madam Sun was here, she always ate two-thirds of the meat all alone. There wasn't meat much to begin with. Even if Wen Qin didn't eat a single piece, Xiao Hui could only eat two to three pieces of meat. Wen Qin didn't have many meat stamps on her, so it was considered good if she could afford it once a week. Yu Bing knew that Wen Qin wasn't rich, so she didn't answer. Instead, she pointed at the grape tree at the door and said, forget about the meat. The grapes I bought this time can last us a few days. I think the grapes in your small courtyard are about to ripen. When they ripen, just pick a basket for me. It's not cheap to buy them outside. When Wen Qin heard this, she hurriedly smiled and replied, no problem. When Yu Bing taught Xiao Li at the Xiao family's house at night, she realized that many of Xiao Lin's basic knowledge wasn't solid. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. 417 Talent Yu Bing frowned as she flipped through Xiao Lin's essay. Not only were the idioms used wrongly, but there were also many spelling errors. Her attention was usually on Xiao Li and Xiao Xing, and she only paid attention to Xiao Lin occasionally. 
She saw that Xiao Lin was quite good at math and that he was a serious listener, but she didn't expect this kid's language arts skills to be so bad. When Xiao Sheng saw Yu Bing's ugly expression, he asked curiously, what's wrong? Yu Bing looked at Xiao Sheng with an indescribable expression. Don't you check Xiao Lin's language arts skills and such? Xiao Sheng frowned and asked, is there a need for me to check? Yu Bing was stunned by this question. Xiao Lin was a little puzzled when he heard this. Sister Yu Bing, our teacher doesn't have such requirements. If there's a mistake, the teacher will mark the mistakes after checking the homework. Only then did Yu Bing realize that education in the country was still at the laissez-faire stage, unlike in the future. It was nowhere as competitive. However, in this 500-word essay, there were 20 to 30 spelling errors. Yu Bing felt that if Xiao Lin continued like this, Xiao Lin would only be slightly better than an illiterate. Looking at Xiao Lin, who still had a confused expression and didn't realize that there were many problems with his studies, Yu Bing could understand why homework was enough to drive some parents crazy. Xiao Lin, in the future, tell your brother all the new terms you learn every day in class and let him review them with you every night. It'll only take a few minutes, so it won't delay anything. When Xiao Lin heard that it would only take a few minutes, he agreed readily, but he completely ignored the fact that he would be punished with copywriting if he made a mistake. Yu Bing handed the essay to Xiao Sheng as she said gloomily, you have to check Xiao Lin's learning. You can't just let him finish writing every day without checking. Take a look yourself. There are so many errors on it. Xiao Sheng wasn't surprised after seeing it. Studying was one's personal responsibility. If he was bad at studying, he could learn something else. The most important thing was for him to be self-reliant. That's okay. Perhaps Xiao Lin doesn't like studying very much, and that's why he got this score. Yu Bing also knew that people nowadays didn't value knowledge that much. They valued it because for thousands of years, they had the philosophy that nothing is as important as studying. They didn't value it because after high school students finished school, they would farm in the field like many illiterate farmers. In addition, many parents only knew commonly used words and could only tutor first and second year students. They were helpless in regards to anything beyond that, so they had no choice but to let their children be. However, Yu Bing knew how rapid the development and changes of the world would be in the future. What did the 21st century lack the most? Talents. As Yu Bing looked at the three siblings in front of her, she analyzed for them, the lack of knowledge is only temporary. You might not feel the difference between having knowledge and not having knowledge now, but why? It's because jobs are allocated by the country now, so the city will assign them as many jobs as possible and there are no extra vacancies. Adult city dwellers come to the countryside to farm, so it seems that everything is carried out step by step and whether one has to study or not depends on whether one's parents have the ability to help one find a job. Then what if all of this changes one day? What if all jobs are publicly recruited and only the capable ones get the jobs? If you have more knowledge than others, won't you have a higher chance than others? Won't you have more choices than others? Shaolin immediately gave an answer that was unique to people of this era. That has nothing to do with us. We're from the countryside. The jobs in the city are reserved for city dwellers. Yu Bing asked again, then what if rural people can also go to the city to work? When Xiao Lin heard this, he replied, that'll cost money. A female classmate's father spent money and pulled strings to become a worker at the sugar factory in town. Yu Bing's expression froze. The dogma and rigidity of this era were so deeply engraved in everyone's bones that it was like their DNA. Everyone's thoughts were very rigid. There were too many people who didn't dare to think outside the box. They didn't dare to imagine a change in the country in the future. Yu Bing could only use another method to make it easier for everyone to understand. Your classmate's father has at least graduated from junior high, right? Shaolin nodded vigorously when he heard this. Yes, but unfortunately, he didn't finish high school. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. 418 Little Teacher Hearing this, Yu Bing used the village's food factory as an example. More than half of the workers in the factory had graduated from junior high school or above. Important positions that don't require hard labor all filled by knowledgeable people. Let me ask you, you're all earning the same amount of money, so are you willing to earn money easily or work yourself to death? Shaolin immediately replied, of course we want to earn money easily. Yu Bing turned to look at Xiaoxing again. Xiaosheng smiled and said, you mean that we have to take learning seriously and that we have to do our best so that we can seize the opportunities that might come and change our fate? Yu Bing nodded in satisfaction. That's a good summary. Studying will let you have more choice than others when facing opportunities. Don't question the use of what you've learned. These things will send you to further places in the future. What you learn will become ways for you to open up this world's opportunities and become a better version of yourself. 
Shaolin and Shaoli couldn't fully understand Yubing's words, but when they experienced more things and saw more of the world, they would know why knowledge made them better versions of themselves. Then, Yubing gave Shaolin an assignment. In the future, you have to be a teacher for an hour every night. Teach Shaoli everything you learned that day. In the eyes of primary school students, teachers were synonymous with wisdom. Moreover, he could let his sister learn what they had learned, so Xiao Lin happily accepted the mission. Xiao Sheng had already begun to learn the knowledge of the third year of junior high. When Yu Bing saw his progress, she looked up at Xiao Sheng and said, You have to finish middle school knowledge by September. Otherwise, since there are too many subjects in high school, the time will be too tight. Xiao Sheng nodded. I also plan to finish junior high school knowledge by next month. Yu Bing took out the test paper she had set out and let Xiao Sheng do it again. Looking at the test paper with almost full marks in all subjects, Yu Bing remained calm, but she secretly treated Xiao Sheng as a star student. Although there were not many subjects to learn in junior high and the difficulty was much lower than that of high school, Xiao Sheng had not finished junior high back then. In addition, he had been out of class for so many years. However, he had mastered the junior high curriculum in just a few months. Thus, Yu Bing praised Xiao Sheng. After Yu Bing completed her task and prepared to go home, Xiao Sheng sent her back to her house as usual. Yu Bing recalled seeing Xiao Lin massage Xiao Li's eyes before she left, so she asked about the surgery. At the mention of this, Xiao Sheng was also a little annoyed. There's still no news. She's only been pushed up one spot after so long. Yu Bing couldn't help with this and could only ask about the current situation. As long as we don't give up, there will be hope. Since Yu Bing mentioned Xiao Sheng's worries, she naturally couldn't leave just like that. Hence, the two of them walked back and forth in the empty space between the two homes. Xiao Sheng could see the worry in Yu Bing's eyes, so he said, Don't worry about me. I'm fine. It's been so many years. If it really doesn't work out, I'll earn money and support her for the rest of my life. After saying that, he thought about how Yu Bing would be a member of the Xiao family in the future, so it would be disrespectful for him to make such a decision directly. Yu Bing, don't worry. I'll work hard to earn money. Even if I have to support Xiao Li, I won't let you suffer or worry about money. Yu Bing was originally listening to Xiao Sheng's plan seriously, but she didn't expect the topic to suddenly change to her, so she was caught off guard. The tips of her ears and cheeks flushed as she whispered shyly, Who cares about your money? You can give your money to whoever you want. Xiao Sheng touched his nose and lowered his head to look at Yu Bing, who was avoiding eye contact out of bashfulness. He smiled and said, You don't want to interfere, but I'm begging you to interfere. Yu Bing rolled her eyes at Xiao Sheng coquettishly. As she pursed her lips, she couldn't hide the smile on her face. Xiao Sheng, you're getting more and more glib-tongued. Xiao Sheng was stunned. This wasn't a good thing, but for some reason, Yu Bing didn't look angry. After he thought for a while, he felt that this might be what Zhang Chao had said. Women always said one thing but meant another. Seeing that Yu Bing wasn't angry and was in a good mood, Xiao Sheng was slightly relieved. Thinking of his pitifully low score, he decided to learn from Zhang Chao in the future. Hence, he replied seriously, I'm telling the truth. That's what I think. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. 419 Remittance Bill On the last day of August, Yu Yin didn't find the remittance slip sent to her by her family at the village committee. Yu Yin refused to give up and looked around a few more times. Director Zhao, are the letter and transfer forms here? Zhao Lin glanced at Yu Yin and replied aloofly, they're all there. Yu Yin suspected that Zhao Lin had misplaced or lost her receipt. At the thought of this, her tone became a little unfriendly. My family would definitely send me money at the end of the month at the latest. Zhao Lin understood what Yu Yin meant, so she raised her head and frowned. What do you mean? If you have something to say, just say it directly. There's no need to beat around the bush. Yu Yin snorted. What do I mean? I'm just telling the truth. Zhao Lin put down her pen and looked at Yu Yin steadily as she said with a cold expression, If you think I stole from you, there's no need. You're the only one who can take the money. It's useless even if others take it. If you want to say that I tampered with it, please provide evidence. If you don't have evidence, this can be considered slander. Although Zhao Lin spoke nonchalantly, the mockery was obvious. Yu Yin immediately cowered when she heard the mention of slander. To her, this term was equivalent to detention. Moreover, Zhao Lin was a member of the village committee after all. Yu Yin still wanted to stay in the village, so she naturally didn't dare to offend her. However, she still felt that Zhao Lin had misplaced her transfer slip. She couldn't produce evidence, so she could only pout and say softly, That's what you think. I didn't say that. I know my family will send me things every month. 
Yu Yin rolled her eyes at Zhao Lin, but when she saw Zhao Lin slap the table and stand up, she turned around and quickly left the office for fear that Zhao Lin would hold her accountable. Although she could deduce the truth, she had no evidence, so she was at a disadvantage. Yu Yin didn't think that she was a coward at all. After all, if she really angered the other party, she would definitely cause trouble for herself. Yu Yin left the village committee's office. Seeing that it was still early, she planned to go to town to make a call and ask her family to cancel the original transfer form and remit it. Just as she had this thought, Yu Yin saw Yu Bing, who had come to the village committee. Yu Yin stopped in her tracks and crossed her arms in front of her chest arrogantly. When Yu Bing saw Yu Yin standing in the empty space in front of the office, she glanced at her before walking straight to the office. The two of them brushed past each other. Seeing this, Yu Yin suddenly turned around and followed Yu Bing into the office again. Seeing Yu Bing and Zhao Lin chatting and laughing, she suddenly thought of the remittance slip she had not received. When Yu Yin connected the dots, she instantly understood the truth. Yu Bing and Zhao Lin were colleagues. Yu Bing had the status of team leader and project manager, and she was even Zhao Lin's son's tractor driver, so Zhao Lin must have deliberately messed with her to curry favor with Yu Bing. The more Yu Yin thought about it, the more she felt that it made sense. She looked at Yu Bing with a vicious gaze and resented Madam Sun for being too inefficient. She had clearly pointed out a way for Madam Sun, so why was she still wasting her time on Wen Chain? If not for the fact that she had to be more careful after leaving the police station to prevent her future from being affected, she wouldn't have needed that stupid mother and son from the Sun family. No matter how indignant Yu Yin was, very soon, she was no longer in the mood to target Yu Bing. She couldn't get into contact with her adoptive parents, and she had also lost contact with her adoptive brother. Yu Yin was in a bad mood after she heard the military communications officer repeatedly emphasize that he wasn't lying. Yu Yin suppressed her anger and had no choice but to say, call Choi Jin over. When the communications officer heard the other party change her request, he finally heaved a sigh of relief. All right, I'll go look for Commander Choi now. With that, he hung up and went to the dormitory to look for him. Choi Jin looked at the chili sauce, pork jerky, and sweet potatoes that Jiang Chun had sent him. As soon as they arrived, more than half of them were snatched away by his soldiers. He hurriedly put away the rest. You brats, eat them sparingly. Your wife's culinary skills are superb. Commander, how did you win her over? She sends you food and clothes all day long. I've been married to my wife for so many years, but I've never seen her so attentive to me. When Chui Jean heard their teasing, a smug expression appeared on his usually stoic face. Why do you think I've been single for so many years? I only found such an outstanding person because I prefer quality over quantity. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. For 20 better to have nothing than suck it up. The messenger knocked on the open door. Commander Chui, there's a call for you. When Chui Jean heard this, he put away his share and ran out without looking back. Seeing their superior's reaction, everyone tacitly thought that the person on the other end of the phone was Chui Jin's girlfriend. Life in the army was boring to begin with, and it was Choi Jin's fault. How could Choi Jin's subordinates suppress their curiosity? They started asking about Choi Jin's girlfriend. What's the name of Commander Choi's girlfriend? Does her voice sound good? I heard that she's from the South. Isn't she very gentle? Girlfriend? The messenger was a little stunned. The other party had looked for Yushi at first and said that she was his sister. She had called several times this month. Could it be that Yushi's sister was dating Choi Jin? The communications officer narrowed his eyes and replied firmly, her name is Yu Yin. Chui Jin didn't know that there had been a misunderstanding and was still immersed in the anticipation of talking to Jiang Chun. After picking up the call, he didn't wait for the other party to speak. He said in a gentle voice, Chun Chun, the food I received is very delicious. My subordinates are fighting over it. Don't send me so much next time. Your salary isn't high either. By the way, I asked someone to buy you a watch. I was worried that it would break when I sent the package. I'll give it to you when I have time off next time. Yu Yin was stunned for a moment before replying awkwardly, It's me, Yu Yin. Chui Jin was also stunned for a moment. He knew that he had misunderstood, so he immediately said impatiently, Miss you, why are you looking for me? When Yu Yin sensed the difference in Chui Jin's attitude, she was even more unhappy. Chui Jin, you're too much. What right do you have to treat me differently? Chui Jin chuckled. He was already used to Yu Yan's playing the blame game. I should be the one asking you why should I treat you how I treat my girlfriend. When Yu Yan heard this, her first reaction was that Chui Jin was hinting that she could enjoy this treatment if she became his girlfriend. Hence, she blushed in embarrassment. Pfft, how shameless. I knew you still had fantasies about me. Let me tell you, it's impossible between us. 
The gentleness in Chui Jin's voice on the phone just now and his usual cold appearance were a stark contrast. It made Yu Yin feel that if she could win over such a man, it would be quite satisfying. However, she quickly remembered that Chui Jin was a villager her adoptive mother's family had deliberately arranged for her. After she came back to her senses, she rejected him righteously. She definitely couldn't fall for their scheme. Chui Jin was stunned when he heard this. He felt that not only was there something wrong with Yushi's sister's morals, but there was also something wrong with her brain. He didn't want to waste time with her, so he asked directly, Why are you looking for me? If there's nothing else, I'm hanging up. Only then did Yu Yin remember the most important thing. Wait, why can't I find my brother? When Chui Jin heard Yu Yan's words, he felt like laughing. The missions carried out by everyone in the army were confidential. If she asked him, who should he ask? Your brother went on a mission. Didn't the messenger tell you? Yu Yin was still a little suspicious and she asked angrily, he told me, but I suspect that you were behind it. Did you say something bad about me to my brother that made him misunderstand me and ignore me? Chui Jin frowned. He didn't want to waste any more time with Yu Yin, so he replied sarcastically, How many years have you and your brother been family for? Your brother and I only met in the army. How can your brother misunderstand you just because I said a few words? If I had that kind of influence, you should suspect that your character is so bad that you can't hide it from your brother anymore. Yu Yin immediately retorted, There's something wrong with your character. Who goes on a mission for so long? When Chui Jin heard this, he felt sorry for Yu Shi. His sister, who he missed, didn't even know about the uncertain timing of his missions. He had only been with Jiang Chun for a few months, but he already learned about the confidentiality rules and various instructions in advance for fear that he would cause trouble for him. Yu Yin, if you had cared more about your brother, you wouldn't have asked me such a question. Yu Shi hasn't returned from his mission. It's the same no matter who you ask. Don't look for me next time. I don't have time to answer your nonsense. With that, Chui Jin hung up. Yu Yin frowned at the phone call that had been hung up before she could even reply and put down the phone in anger. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much.